You've probably heard the claim, in space no one can hear you scream. Well, someone got in touch with me recently and said, we've got hold of a large balloon that we're going to send to the edge of space. Would you like to be part of it? And I thought, this sounds like a wonderful opportunity to do an experiment. So I suggested to Omar, we know you've heard this claim, no one can hear you scream in space, but actually we could test the physics of this, of how sound is transmitted through a gas and actually work out whether or not, as the gas gets thinner with altitude, the sound does disappear. I think that's uh, eagle snakes quite a avoid. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's telling me to tell to warn you all that I'm recording. Right, okay. Cool. Okay, so that's not recording. That. Well, yeah. So nice to see everyone. So when we last met up, we said that we would uh, be hearing from Dave to find out how it's gone, Dave. So you've been doing a bit of engineering. So what, what have you discovered so far, and what have you done? So the idea to find out how you would sound um, screaming in space is we obviously can't send a person up. They, it'd be very expensive and also they wouldn't survive very well. So instead we're sending up a loudspeaker and we need to hear that. So we've also got a microphone. Now life always gets more complicated than that because there are two different ways which the sound can get from the loudspeaker to the microphone. It can either go through the air, which is what we want to detect, or it can go through the body of the um, mechanism holding it so if we just kind of bolted two of them down then the sound would just go you just hear it just going through the piece of metal which we screwed them to and we wouldn't get really hear any of the effects of the air so i'm attempting to suspend these to minimize the air the sound which goes through the body um of the um, support system um from the loudspeaker to the microphone and are you pretty comfortable with from the software side then omar do you think it's going to be okay um so yeah i uh, i'm in the middle of um uh, trying to test out this equipment I have a mic and a speaker that are going to be on the payload and I want uh, I want to make sure that the quality of the audio is is good enough because uh, um, and so I recorded myself screaming and now I'm going to uh, you know play the audio and try to record it using the mic That was recorded with the mic, and now we're going to play what the mic recorded. So currently, you know, just trying to uh, modify the code to make it sound better, uh, as good as possible, uh, <laughs> pretty much. Three, two, two one. one. Go. It's not every day you go on the radio and you say to people, right, it's your chance to send a scream to space. So we've been on radio stations in multiple countries now and on the Naked Scientist podcast that's gone all around the world. And I think probably half a million people plus have heard us appeal for a scream for space now. And we've had quite a lot of entries in. We've had to listen to them. I think my hearing has probably suffered irreparable damage because of listening to this. But what we've got is at least five really good screams. And the winner was sent in by a lady from South Africa. And it just made us scream with laughter. Stop, 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 stop. Well behind me you can see the fruits of our labours from about the last three months and hopefully this balloon is going to go to space or near space. We're hoping it's going to get to about 110,000 feet that's just around about 35 kilometres that should see us go through the ozone layer and so the box we're going to take aloft with us not only is going to measure okay. whether or not someone can hear you screaming in space. Really? It's also going to measure some of the gases in the atmosphere. Well, and so as we get to about 15 kilometres up thereabouts, we should see the ozone layer come in. And we should also see the temperature plummeting. And we should hear the screams getting quieter and quieter and quieter. As long as we can get this thing off the ground. Five, four, three, two, one. Hunger!
alive. Ooh. Is Ooh, it? Still burning. We, lost, we actually lost telemetry. Uh, had it not been for the Find My Phone app from Google, thank you Google, uh, thank you Android, uh, we, this is how we actually found the, the We lost the line because it, it was hidden below the horizon, it was descending quite rapidly and it was hidden below the horizon and then because it fell down, the, the satellite antenna actually faced the ground and this didn't work so we lost two out of three means of finding this, so this was the absolute last one, the, the last resort and when we first said they uh, used the find my phone thing, it gave us a very, very big circle, which if it stayed like that, we wouldn't be able to find it. But then after minutes passed, it started triangulating more and more accurately. And then it pinpointed it right here. Look at that. Look at the burst balloon. This is like bits and pieces. Look, it's always like that. <laughs> and it can find brilliantly.